Do you know who this is? I mean, she's, she's pretty, a very symmetrical face, nice teeth. I don't know who she is, though. It's Oprah? Oh, darn it. I know who Oprah is. Oprah's got such a distinctive voice. Who needs to recognize her face? But, yeah. Sorry about that, Oprah. Paul knows who Oprah is, but when he sees just her face, he draws a total blank. That's because his face network, the areas of his brain responsible for facial recognition, developed atypically. It's a condition called prosopagnosia, or face blindness. It's more common than you'd think, affecting as many as 1 in 50 people. But its prevalence has only been understood in the past 20 years. And the fact that it is so little known often leads to painful misunderstandings. Some people in my life just developed a serious dislike of me. Oh, this guy's such a jerk. We've talked several times and, and he never acknowledges me. What people on the face blindness spectrum need is for you and I to understand what they're experiencing. So let's do an experiment. For those of us without face blindness, perhaps the best way to understand how Paul looks at a face is to look at these faces upside down. Even though you can see the individual facial features, you might not immediately recognize who these people are. At least, not until we turn them right side up. If you can recognize a face, then it's a bit like you can fly through life on autopilot. But what if you couldn't? Imagine the office holiday party. You're surrounded by people who you see every day, but you can't tell who is who. Are these people smiling because they recognize you or just being nice? There's a certain amount of fear that somebody's gonna come back and say, what kind of idiot are you? Even in a crowded room, you're left in a world of one. This fear also occurs in the most private settings. Take what happened just a few years ago. Paul was visiting his favorite cousin, Rose. I knew she was going to be there. I knew she was pregnant. But when he walked through the door... It's about 15 feet away. There's this pregnant woman. I just jumped and said, that's probably a friend of Rose's who also happens to be pregnant. They, they have a lot in common. I offered her my hand. I said, uh, hi, I'm Rose's cousin. And she laughed. And as soon as she laughed, I knew, oh, OK, that's Rose. So how does Paul navigate social situations? Well, the same way he flies. His favorite hobby is gliding, flying engineless aircraft. Without an engine, gliders seek rising columns of air that give them upward lift. In a sky full of direct roots, Paul twists. He turns. On the ground, Paul follows a similar pattern. He goes out of his way, often in circles, to identify faces based on social setting. At the airport, other pilots will sign in on the flight chart, and Paul can peek and see who's there. At choir practice... The fact that everybody's sort of sorted by their vocal range helps. Like, there's a structure there, and you learn how to recognize them from the back of their head. The strategy can be a game changer. But at the end of choir practice, everybody gets up to mingle. And Paul has to rely on a mental dossier. A catalog of secondary traits. Height, stature, body shape. If they just have a big nose, yeah, you know there are a lot of big noses in the world. Same with bushy eyebrows. But if that person has bushy eyebrows and a big nose, it kind of narrows it down. Innumerable times I'm looking at somebody and I'm like, I just don't know who they are. And I know I should know. 
And then they'll say something and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's Steve. If I remember voices, there's accent, pitch and tone. I will look at how they walk. Gates like a fingerprint. Older people take shorter steps. But younger people are light on their feet. I really like people because it feels so good when you when you connect. It of course is painful when you can't. When Paul first told me about his passion for gliding, I assumed it was his escape. No faces, no parties, no social interactions. But it's actually the opposite. Gliding is all about the people. It's about the people that you meet, the people you connect with. Life is about connecting with people. Up in the air, what Paul really found was a place where he could connect with others without relying on facial recognition. At 4,500 feet, he disconnects from the tow plane. Unlike airplanes, gliders will circle together in formation. The maneuver requires a hyper-awareness of one's connection to the other pilots. It's everything that's missing from an interaction with someone who you can't recognize. I trust you with my life. That's a profound connection. So how can we join Paul in this dance? It's not terribly helpful to tell me your name, because then I have to remember the name uh, based on this very partial perception of you. If someone like Paul is struggling to identify you, the key is to provide details. You could say, We met at the Blue Moon restaurant. We talked about Ulysses for a half hour, and I'm like, okay, I know who this guy is. Reminding them of your connection, even if you were speaking just a few minutes ago, can help spark that aha moment, that instantaneous human bond that is at the root of how we care for each other. Don't you like seeing a friend? Hey, how you doing? For me, that's a delayed response, but when I feel it, I really feel it. I am really glad to see you. <laughs>